All right, this is section 3.2a, measures of dispersion. Um, these first measures of spread, which is what we call dispersion, just how spread out numbers are, um, these are what we use to kind of tell how reliable things are. Um, sometimes just finding the average is not enough, so we want to know if the numbers are close together or are they spread out. So measures of dispersion or measures of spread are what we're going to look at here. I'm going to kind of go through the preview of the things that you need to know, and then we'll just start working in Hawk. So one of the, the measures of spread, dispersion, is the range. Um, very simple calculation. You're going to do the biggest value, the maximum, and you're going to subtract the smallest value in that order, and that is the range. Okay, that just tells you how far apart they are. Um, here are some examples in Hawk, so you can look through those. Now, standard deviation, this is the most important one that we're going to be using, okay? Standard deviation just tells you basically how far each data value is from the mean on average. Okay, so some numbers might be, you know, 10 units away from the mean, some might be 2 or 3. And so what standard deviation is doing is giving you an average of all of those differences and giving you a number to tell you about how far each value is from the mean on average. Okay. So this is the formulation for it. Um, we will not be using this. We're going to use the calculator to compute it. But um, just to show you what it is, population is denoted by this little Greek letter sigma. Okay. You see the summation in there, which is adding everything up. It's taking each value, subtracting the mean, squaring that, adding all of those different terms up, dividing by n, the population. This is population standard deviation. This is sample standard deviation. Both calculations are very similar. Difference is this is the population mean. This is the sample mean. Both of them are using mean. They're both squared. This is the big difference. The sample divides by n minus 1. The population divides by the whole population. Um, this n minus 1 is really described in a later course. It's kind of advanced to describe here. But basically, you use n minus 1 to get rid of bias. And we'll be talking about bias like later on in chapter 8 and 9. Okay. So these are the formulations we're going to do it in the calculator. Um, the rounding rule is always go to one more decimal place than what you need. Okay. And here they're telling you what this is, Greek letter sigma and sample standard deviation is S. Um, let me see if they give you a definition. Um, yeah, this just says how we might uh, expect a typical member of the data set to differ from the mean. So that's kind of what I was trying to explain. Um, if the standard deviation equals zero, then none of the values are different. So sometimes they're all the same, then it'll be different. And then it says right here, this is an important note, we also know the standard deviation could never be negative since it measures distances, measures of distances are always positive. So it's telling you how far you are from the average. So it will never be negative. That is important. You're going to see a question like that in Hawk. Um, and then you have the formulas. Again, we won't be using those. We're going to be doing it with the calculator. So they show you a few examples. Here's them kind of walking you through step by step how to do standard deviation. So they take each of the numbers. They find the mean. So they add them all up, divide by the total. They get a mean. So they're saying 7 is the mean. Each number minus the mean. And if you were to just add all of these numbers up, you would get zero every time. See, negative two and positive two are zero. Positive one, negative one is zero, and zero. That's kind of like an intermediate step. Um, some numbers are above the mean, some are below. So when you add up all those differences, you get zero. It's not helpful for that. So they square it and then add them up and then do the square root. And that's how they do this. Now, here's what we're going to be doing in the calculator. The same thing we did in the previous section to find mean, median, and mode. We're going to do stat, enter. We're going to input our list in L1. We're going to go to stat again. We're going to go to calc. One variable statistic. 
and then we're going to hit enter twice or you're going to go down to calculate and hit enter and it's going to give you this output notice it is showing you SX SX is what they're using for standard deviation S the sample the Sigma X is what they're using for the population standard deviation so be aware what the question is asking you for this one was asking you for sample standard deviation so if this was our formula output, we would look at S, not the sigma. <clears throat> so they tell you a little bit about where the formula comes from. And then I'm also going to show you how to recall the variance. So they tell you to type in um, multiple numbers. The variance is the same as the standard deviation equation without the square root. Um, you do need to know the relationship between standard deviation and variance. So standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. And if you have the standard deviation and you square it, you get the variance. Um, again, rounding rule is always one more decimal place than your original data. I'm not sure if the book shows you how to get the variance. So what they tell you to do is type out the standard deviation to about six places and then square it. I'm going to show you how to recall it from the calculator. And this is it. So let's go over to Hawks and we'll start uh, some problems. 